So here I'm jumping back to the tabletops. You know, mostly to this point, it's been a lot of milling and rough cutting. And now I'm cutting these tabletops down to their final size. One thing, like I said before, I like to make some game time decisions. And this one, after being all glued up, I had a little bit of extra width, so or depth, I guess you'd call it. So I ended up doing this table instead of the planned um, 24 inches deep. I did it like 26 or I don't know, I can't remember. I just did it a couple inches deeper than I originally planned. You can see I did Lincoln's a little bit narrower just because that's how it ended up glued up. So his is more true to the original design that I had catted up and I think they work perfect. I like the extra real estate and Lincoln doesn't need any more room to put monster trucks and Legos on his so I was happy with it but just squaring off these sides like I said I don't have a gigantic table saw sled maybe I'll make one someday but this is just easier to do with the track saw so making a couple lines lining them up and getting it all done with one pass you can see here on this one there's a little bit of a crack in one of the pieces right there you saw it kind of fall down but cut that off which was the plan got it all squared up and then now I am rounding the edges so part of the design was these rounded off corners and I originally I was tracing that uh, radius from the glue well not glue the polyacrylic can on all the corners and then I realized this is something I could template route so I made that radius on this scrap piece of walnut and then just use a template router bit to put that same shape on all the corners and right here it looks like it's like catching up oh, oh, can't get through it's actually that hose hitting that clamp which that hose is super nice for sucking in most of the chips obviously you can see the ones still flying in the camera but makes everything a lot clearer and it's the flexi port kit from rockler so if you're not rocking the full eight million dollar festival setup then the this works good just goes with a lot of different tools and is real handy for keeping dust down so here you can see proof that I actually did use a little bit of CAD to plan these out and figure this out and right now I was like dreading this part is figuring out how to get all the right angles and everything on because the legs are actually splayed out at about a 10 degree angle and while this was initially kind of daunting once I started doing it it wasn't too bad and like these legs it's you can see I'm using the crosscut um, whatever those things are called uh, it, the name slips my mind right now but the I'm cutting it at two different angles so it's a compound angle it's 10 degrees out and then 10 degrees forward well the front ones are forward so you can see I put a taper on the leg. Well, the front legs are splayed out, tilted at that same angle. But you can see this is essentially the joinery I needed to cut into the leg so that it would fit on the tabletop. I wanted it to be a real strong joint because you saw with the design of this whole thing, it's a little bit, it's not super supported. And I wanted it to go together in a strong manner. So. I cut these slots into these uh, legs on both sides and then I cut matching slots on the table and it turned out fantastic. I was actually super happy with it. As you can see I had to figure out something for the taper of the front of that leg. I couldn't just cut it straight flat or it wouldn't cut the grooves at the right angle and so I cut that piece of wood which is the same taper as the legs and then just adjusted it with the angle finder to make sure the back side of that leg was parallel or level with the tabletop and as you can see here I was super pumped when this went on so smoothly um, just another one of those things that if you have good equipment and set it up nice or you at least just have your equipment set up square then it makes things like this way easier as you can see there is a perfect fit um, I was happy with it so the next part is I'm obviously not running these tabletops through my saw stop at some absurd height and angle. So what I did is I put the 
legs on, put some tape to kind of protect them. And then I'd cut one side and get to the depth I needed. And then I'd take and just slide that leg over, essentially a saw blade width. And if you look close, you can see the pencil line right there that I stayed inside. But I just slid the leg over and did the same thing on the other side. And so the leg worked as like a nice template to get that 10 degree angle cut in that desk and it went together fantastic. So I was happy with it. Here I'm just marking a line so I can chisel out the wood, essentially everything that I cut. And that chiseling surface you can see is kind of junky, like I should have maybe come out a sixteenth of an inch and just chip the whole thing away and then clean this up. It doesn't really matter because it's like hidden on that glue surface, but it's not going to be one of your super satisfying, smooth chisel clips like it could have been, but it didn't really affect the end product and it worked out just fine. Half lap. That's what I would call these. I, I don't know. So, when I'm making these videos, when I first started doing it, and I'm doing this vo voiceover part, I would restart it like 40 times because I'm like, oh, I slightly didn't pronounce that V sound. And finally, I realized that was an exercise in insanity and a giant pain. So, I will forget names and misspeak things, but. I'm not gonna do like 40 takes on all these. So anyways, half lap. And back to regular programming. This is, I'm just putting a rabbit in the back of the boxes so that I can then put the back paneling on. And this is actually one feature I really liked in these desks because I wanted to make it so the desk could stand in like the middle of a room or <clears throat> didn't have to be against the wall. So I don't wanna use like some plywood eighth inch backing so I used the old bandsaw and uh, cut these planks to do along the back and I'm really happy with how they turned out it's actually one of my favorite features of these builds but I essentially just made you know they're like three sixteenth inch thick planks and I kind of rounded the edges over as I sanded them and then I just pin nailed them in the back and they're not supposed to be like tongue groove or latched together or anything they're just supposed to be kind of slatting for the back and I like it, it turned out to be a cool feature so you have to let me know what you think here I'm just having to tilt it up to use uh, the old persuader to get this to all fit in which actually worked out well tightened everything up but I did the sliding the other direction on my desk with the oak and honestly that was just because I had the scraps that I could resaw at the right size so I like them both honestly I think I like the horizontal sliding a little bit better but again you'll see here I had to use the old persuader to get these in nice and tight but it turned out good I was happy with this sliding in the back and how it looked so now I am, this is probably one of the hardest parts of the build, I'm essentially cutting out the part of the back leg where this box will fit into it. The box is primarily supported by this back leg, so it had to be set into it in a manner that would provide some structural stability. And so that necessitated doing some basically like some like partial half laps and cutting out the portion of the leg that would go up against the back of the box. So the lip from the rabbit I cut to put those paneling pieces in provides a place for the leg to kind of hold on to the box as well. And I don't know if I got a good close up of it fitting in. Um, I nailed it on this one on my desk on Lincoln's there was 
I don't know if I tilted it weird. There's a tiny gap, but you can't really see it unless you know what to look for. So this part is one of my, I felt like a wizard doing this part. So I needed a way, I wanted the front of the, all the legs are tapered or kind of rounded, not tapered, I would say rounded. The profile is rounded and there's like router bits you can get by like a gigantic one inch round over and don't put it up all the way out of the table saw but I elected to do it this way which is essentially using this scrap piece and running the saw blade up through it and this allowed me to taper or to round the fronts of the legs I couldn't just run it through against the saw like against the fence because these are tapered so you can only run one side through otherwise the taper would mess it all up so that way I was able to run the side I wanted to get tapered through the saw and it worked pretty well so a little bit of trial and error but I was happy with a turnout got the fronts of all of them rounded and here I am using Rubio it's like just their stain that's their pre-color and it, I just used it because I used the Rubio oil for the rest of the build and I wanted something that I knew was compatible with Rubio Pure, like the oil plus TC. So once again, I was super happy with the Rubio products. Went on jet black, good even coverage. Um, worked well with the finish, so I was happy with that. I was happy with the two-tone. Um, you'll start to see here me putting it together, and this is, like I said before, I had some of that darker oak that was the tabletop in the box and I didn't have enough to do the legs and I wanted to do something two-tone anyway so I thought this would be a good opportunity for that um, and you kind of see which parts I obviously did the black and then which parts I left the natural color of that wood the skirting I think that was that big a deal I don't think I even did video of making it it was just other parts to throw on to stabilize the legs here the putting everything together went pretty smooth um, nothing too crazy so all in all it went pretty well and it felt super sturdy which I was pleased with here I'm just throwing on some tape so the epoxy didn't drip down through the bottom and I was glad Izzy was around to help move Owen so he didn't get brained by this table leg as I set everything down so one thing that's kind of funny it looks all ski wampus because I set it down and the legs are all like five inches in different length and I never trimmed them to length because I was just going to do it when I leveled the whole thing but they're absurdly different heights so right out here when I almost passed out trying to get this up onto my table so I could level it you can kind of see the legs and their sweet differences in height but uh, leveling it pretty simple process but I just get, like, my table saw is obviously the most level thing I have in my shop. And so I just make sure to match the level from the table saw up to the desk. And I'm going for, like, 30 inches tall with this. And right now, because one of the legs is, like, 8 inches long, it's all ridiculous. But this is basically how I did it with the pole saw. I initially tried clamping all these things as a guide for the saw. And finally I figured if I just took the time and carefully cut some like guide grooves along either side of the leg. It was super fast just to saw them the rest of the way off and it worked great. Once I got the process down it went pretty fast and you can see right there like I was saying before how that box fits into the leg and it ended up being super strong so I was happy with that. But you'll see there nailed my height right at 30 inches. I'm going to sand off these epoxy these bug holes that I filled. And then I decided here that I wanted, I didn't want just an open back. I thought it looked better with this slatting to kind of tie in with the box. So I was putting a rabbit there on the back for some slatting. Right here I'm putting a piece of tape down and just touching up this part of this leg that got dinged or something, I don't remember what happened. Then the moment you've all been waiting for, throwing on the finish and like I said before, this is Rubio Oil plus 2C, and it's always fun putting this part on. There's so much work that goes into it, and you kind of get to see how it's going to look in the end. I 
put this finish on because like I said before I the legs I just put the coloring on and I didn't want to put the finish on beforehand because I wanted to make sure I could glue it so I kind of did the finish on this in stages whereas Lincoln's it was all just one solid the same kind of wood with no coloring or anything I just put it all together first and then put the finish on so after I got that bottom part of the desk finished I had to put this top part on and I used the domino again to put some as you can see biscuits or I guess not biscuits dominoes in the tops of the legs and then in that upper desktop so it worked pretty well um, it was nice everything was the same angle that 10 degrees and I could just set my domino joiner at 10 degrees right here is the I'm making the template so that I can put some cable holes in both the top part of the desk and then the bottom part and this was a handy use of the this mill is a Nomad Pro from Carbide 3D and uh, it works great it's super precise and sometimes when obviously I can't use the mill directly on the desk that I then use it to make templates that I can template route onto my piece or whatever I'm doing so oh, enjoy that pulling off the plastic it's the best part um, here so that round hole is gonna be where like the plug fits in and then the other one with the tabs on it is the ledge for the plug so you'll see first I do like half half the depth of the wood with the round hole and then I take and move it to the the deeper one and use that other one so that I can have some little ledges and then the plug sits on top of those ledges so once I got that because I wouldn't have been able to route that with that top on so once I was able to route that in both the top piece and well as the main desk then I could put the top on that I had already marked so now I was putting that slatting on that I already rabbited in and fortunately the Starbond glue bottle has the right diameter for what I needed and I used that to put some roundovers so those slats fit in the back and then it's just a matter same as the box just pin nailing all those in Lincoln testing out the whole size the last piece fits in nice and so that's the back that's I want it to look like that so that you'd be able to have that t the desk anywhere in the room I didn't put any finish on the sides of the inside of the box because I was considering doing like wooden box or like drawer tracks which I ended up not doing I changed my mind again I'm using the CNC to make the plugs for the those holes I made and this you can see that one with like the weird boomerang shape or I don't know what shape that is but that's so that you can put cords in the sides so that last pass was just a chamfering pass and put a little bit of ruby on though on there and they fit in nicely so like you can see with that one the cords for like my monitor and everything can go through there this is Lincoln's once I got his desk the same the same point we just did all the finish at once and he had a good time spreading that all around even though he wasted at least $800 of Rubio onto the floor. He was pretty happy with it, as you can see. So I got them mostly done, and the next step is making the boxes or the drawers. And you can see mine. I used basically the leftover wood from the project. That's why I have two walnut drawers and two oak drawers. Um, I had a kind of a particular plan for these drawer fronts and their poles and everything and that necessitated first getting them put on the actual desk and then I took them back off to put the drawer poles I had planned out which I was happy with how they turned out but basically I just got them cut to the general width and then I mounted them on all the drawers and then I went through and flush trimmed it to the box as you can see here I don't know what this looks like I'm having a stroke when I was flush turning that. I don't know why. 
but once I got those on, then it's time to get the drawer pulls done. And I actually use, these are titanium remnants. I get my knife hardware from a website called Tie Connector. It's run by a good dude named, I think it's Steve, Steve or Stephen Kelly. Anyways, he mills a bunch of knife screws and stuff, and those titanium rods are the remnants that come out of his mill, and so he sells those for cheap. And I bought a couple of them because I thought it'd be cool to anodize them to go on the fronts of these drawers. And this style of drawer front is, I've seen in a couple, diff a couple different people do it, but essentially it's just that hole in the middle. And then I, this is just like a round over bit, not a round over bit, whatever you call that kind of bit. It's not a flush bottom, but it's the top that's round and it creates that groove that I can then put these titanium rods in for the poles. So Lincoln had a good time helping me anodize these and originally I was just gonna go whatever colors all random but as I was kind of mocking it up I didn't like the it looked a little bit too crazy like I think titanium if you anodize it right can be cool but if you're not careful it looks like some flea market craft project so I ended up just redoing them all into kind of a faded a gold fade which I liked how they looked after that I was pretty happy with it and I just epoxied them in and this is the same epoxy I use for my knives and it's super strong so I don't anticipate it failing and these just coming off so I think we'll see how long they last obviously it's mine so I'll be able to do some in-house testing the side of that drawer box right there was a piece of wood that one of my kids I think it was Grace did some artistic tattooing on while she was hanging out with me in the shop and I thought it'd be cool to incorporate that into my desk so I could keep her little mosaic picture she did. And you can see there's the two-tone. I love how it turned out. Um, the titanium drawer pulls. So you can see the walnut and the two-tone compared next to each other. I'm really happy with the two-tone. I'm glad I did it that way. This walnut, you just can't beat walnut. It just is amazing, especially after it's done. Lincoln's happy with it, and I think it will be timeless.